Hi, my name is Jesse Haas. I'm the National Director of Programs at Pet Partners. And in this video, I will be talking about how to prepare for your Pet Partners Therapy Animal Team Evaluation. A team evaluation is conducted for a team, obviously. It, pet Partners, what that means is one human with one animal. And all prospective or new teams must go through an evaluation as part of the registration process, which allows you to then become a volunteer on behalf of pet partners and go out in your community with your pet. Um, but all existing teams also need to receive an evaluation and pass an evaluation every two years. So there's a new team evaluation and a renewing team evaluation, but they are exactly the same. The exercises are the same. In terms of what the exercises are like, uh, about half of them are species appropriate skills exercises and about half are aptitude exercises. Skills exercises for a dog would look like sit, down, stay, come when called, things like that. In terms of the aptitude half of the evaluation, that is where the evaluator is going to introduce elements that are commonly seen during therapy animal visits. They'll actually introduce that via the exercises. So there is an exercise where a loud noise happens because if you're visiting in a school, for example, the school bell may ring. There is an exercise where somebody will approach your animal and they are using a piece of medical equipment. Again, that's very common if you visit in a nursing care facility or you visit in a hospital. So really that aptitude portion and the entire evaluation is meant as much as possible to mimic a therapy animal visit. Uh, the team evaluation for pet partners is about 35 to 45 minutes, and this includes a post-evaluation feedback session with your evaluator where you receive your score as well as some other information. In terms of scoring, teams can receive, of course, a passing score, and they can also receive a score of not ready or NR, and this simply teams means that the team is not ready that day um, to become a pet partners team, but many teams who receive an NR at their evaluation come back a few weeks or a few months later and do wonderfully. I am frequently asked, how can I train my animal to pass the evaluation? To that, I would say, don't train your animal to pass the evaluation. If ultimately you want to be a successful therapy animal team who enjoys your work and makes an impact, then train and socialize your animal with that in mind and the evaluation will come naturally. But I will share a few things about training. So first of all, we don't have a required training that your animal needs to go through. We do have a required handler's course, but not something for the animal. We don't require that for a couple of different reasons. First of all, we are inclusive of nine different species at Pet Partners, and many of our non-canines don't have extensive training opportunities available in their communities. So we don't want to require something that creates an obstacle for those teams. Secondly, we believe that handlers know their animals best and can figure out what training and socializa socialization is going to be most effective and useful for their animal. So when you take the handler's course and get a little bit more educated about what it is we're looking for in a team, you can then in turn help your animal meet some of those goals and expectations, whether that's through an obedience class or another formal class at a training school, or maybe it's just something that you do at home and that's totally okay as well. All animals are different and are gonna need a different type of preparation, um, not only for the evaluation, but for the entire visiting experience. Couple other things. In the evaluation room, you are not allowed to have treats or food on your person. So of course it's okay to use treats and food motivation during training, that's normal and expected, but ensure that you can get to a place where your animal can respond to commands and remain connected to you even when food is not present. Secondly, the evaluator, their evaluation assistants in the room, as well as the evaluation room itself, will all be unfamiliar to your animal. That's because visits will at least initially be taking place in unfamiliar environments with unfamiliar people, and we want the evaluation room to mimic a visit. But that means that your training program, whatever it might be, needs to consider 
working with your animal and practicing in unfamiliar environments. Same goes for distractions. The evaluation room and therapy animal visits are going to have a lot of distractions. So make sure you're working on your skills and kind of honing some of your aptitude when distractions are present. So even though there's no formal training program for the evaluation or formal training program for pet partners as a whole, I do know that people are hungry for more information about the evaluation before they go into the room. We do have some of those materials available. In order to access them, log into your volunteer center account. And if you don't have one, they are free and easy to set up from our website. Once logged in, right on your home screen in the volunteer center is a box that says resources. Click on that and type in the word evaluation. You'll get a lot of results that you can kind of click through, see what's helpful and useful. The one I always tell people to pay attention to is the evaluation overview. Those are species specific. So this is especially helpful for our non-canine handlers to really understand what happens in the evaluation room for a rabbit or a guinea pig or a bird or whatever it is that you have. In the evaluation overview, you'll see a description of each of the exercises, whether they are skills or aptitude. Um, the overview will also let you know what the evaluator is going to ask you to do, what they're going to be looking for. I also suggest that when you're in the resource library, you type in score sheet. Again, these are species specific, so find the one that's appropriate for you and take a look at how your evaluator is going to score how you and your animal move through each of these exercises. This is a really good time to point out that our entire evaluation and really our entire program is built on the belief that the handler is as important to team success as the animal is. And you'll see that reflected in the score sheet. You will be scored when you're in the room in terms of how you support your pet, how you advocate for them, um, your professionalism. All of those things are, are part of the evaluation process. So it's human and animal together working as a team. So as I mentioned earlier, some teams do receive a score of not ready. And that's OK. It's somewhat normal. We welcome people back. And they often have great success. However, we don't want people to not ready for easily avoidable mistakes. So I want to share some of those with you today as you prepare for your team evaluation. First of all, make sure that you understand appropriate attire for the handler, appropriate equipment for the animal, and the supplies that you need to bring the day of the evaluation event. In some cases, mistakes in this area mean that you will receive a score of not ready right away. For example, if you show up wearing open-toed shoes, which are not allowed. In other cases, the evaluator can work with you to replace a supply that you may have forgotten. But I still find in those cases, uh, teams become flustered when they realize they showed up in a way that maybe they weren't supposed to or they forgot something at home. And so it's better to spend a little bit of time the day or the evening before to make sure you understand attire, equipment, and supplies and show up as prepared as possible. Um, I also see sometimes teams will show up kind of last minute, right before their evaluation. They'll walk into the room and expect to sort of just go and perform right away. But it's usually better to get to the evaluation site 15, 20, maybe even 30 minutes early and walk around, even outdoors. Make sure your animal has a potty break. Make sure they get the wiggles out if they've, they've got those. Um, and when you get into the room, your evaluator will often give you a few moments to walk around or to carry your animal around, let them get used to the sounds, um, the sights, the smells, so that when the exercises begin, they're settled in. If your evaluator doesn't offer this to you, it is totally okay to ask if you can have those few moments. This is similar to a visit, really, because if you're going to a new facility, let's say you've been invited to um, to read with children at a library, and it's a, it's a new environment for you, it's okay to ask the library staff, can I show up a few minutes early and let my animal get settled in before uh, we begin meeting with the children? Um, so this is all totally okay. In terms of specific exercises, there are a few mistakes we see pretty commonly. Um, the first is that 
during some of the exercises where the evaluator or the assistants have their hands kind of all over your animal, we often see handlers fail to support their animal through that process, right? So in overall handling, um, the evaluator might be touching your animal's uh, feet or their ears. Um, there's an exercise where they might be kind of clumsily petting your animal in a way your animal isn't accustomed to. Some handlers will stand back and think, well, I need to let the evaluators see how my animal manages this. In fact, what we want to see is the handler applying what we call pets, which is presence, eye contact, touch, and speech. So being near your animal, uh, meeting their eyes, petting them, talking to them, and supporting them through these interactions. Because no matter how lovely and accepting your animal is, during some of these exercises, at least a little bit of stress is common. What we're looking for is to handle the handler to be able to see that stress or anticipate that stress and support their animal through it. That's how we see teamwork. Um, and if we see a handler not providing that, it can be grounds for that not ready score. Additionally, there is an exercise at the end of the evaluation where the evaluator will ask you, may I give your animal a treat? You can say yes, you can say no, either is okay. But even if you decline the treat, you need to understand that the evaluator will have that food in their hand or in the table behind them or near them. So it will definitely be close to your animal. And that's by design. We want to ensure that animals, even if their handler doesn't allow treats to be given, the animal can still manage to remain kind of calm, cool, and collected even when there is food nearby. But sometimes handlers don't realize that. They think, oh, I declined the treat, therefore it won't even be a part of the evaluation. But that's not the case. So those are just a few exercise examples I wanted to share with you. In closing, good luck on your evaluation. We hope that you join the Pet Partners family very soon. Have a great day.